turf with the backing of Japan. LG up a game, banning the Urshifu, all your Sumi Makaro, taking away Overlord Zora. Well, it makes sense they do play a very mean Zorok, mm -hmm. but we do have Rene picking up the Lapras first pick. Not an unusual thing, well, no surprises here. Not an unusual thing at all, but as we mentioned before, Rin really leveling up their game on that Lapras specifically this weekend and especially today. Look, speaking about level up, we have one Lev up picking up that Umbreon and they have picked up that Zacian away from Luminosity. It almost felt like LG's pick of Zacian in the first game was just to make sure that Ayusumi Macro would not have it. And of course, when they had the opportunity, they snatched it up right away. But also gone uh, is Elo's Hoopa. Hoopa and Leafy on as well. So these are going to be these final picks. They are going to be so crucial for this team composition. Are we going to see another Venusaur Overlord? No. Oh, look, they, they had to give some love to Pikachu, right? They had, yeah. to, they had to put their own mistake. Without a doubt, <laughs> they're going to pick the Speedster for Overlord there on the Dodrio. Elo's back on comfy duty, and we're going to see how well Elo can do their job because Overlord is looking to take over this game. P.E maybe going to this Espeon again. And that was my big question mark here in game two, or excuse me, game one. And it looks like they might be going with a pivot here in game two. I like this Mew pick when you just saw a Dodrio on the other side of the map. Look, it doesn't matter if you take out the Zorak because you have the Dodrio Comfy Jeweler as well. Mm -hmm. With that speed to come and chase them down, but also the stuns that the, the Comfy might end up coming out here, depending on which move it goes, whether it's the Grass Knot or the Magical Leaf, you do not want to get caught out in it. No, without a doubt. And we're talking about, like, Comfy doesn't have as much skill expression as you would like to see a player as phenomenal as Elo have. Grass Knot is one of those things that Comfy has in its kit. And Elo is a player that can use that skill expression to take over games on a less take over game-ish Pokemon, if you will. These teams are locked and loaded, and our casters are as well. So we're going to get Zoinks and Wonder Chef back in here. Take it away. Oyasumi Makro with their backs against the wall against the team that is very familiar with the World Championship stage. In fact, they currently hold that title of being World Champions. Oyasumi Makro trying to play spoiler, but also trying to prove to their home region that they belong in that Grand Finals. What an excellent set of teams to be in this winner's finals, but the pressure is truly, truly on at this point. And I gotta say, I'm gonna play a game of heads up with you. All right, okay. here's, the, here's the, the hint. It's a legendary from Pokemon Sword and Shield. Ah, uh, yes, Samus and... Uh, no, it's Seishin. Yes, it was a yes, trick yes. question. I it was it. a trick question, actually, because it was two. I want to talk about them both. Okay. The fact that we're still seeing the Urshifu band uh, and the Zacian go to the other side, I feel, are two huge parts of this match. Yeah. But let's see how they affect it exactly. LG up at match point on the left side. Oyasumi Makro on the right. Oyasumi Makro building basically another double dive composition, right? You're running that Leafeon. You're running that Zacian. Both of those are melee damaging Pokemon. They need to be up close and personal. It's going to be up to the Mew of Yumi to really do some early damage and soften up those HP bars before the top tier level players of Oyasumi Macro can get to work. And can I just note as well, I love the role switches that they have on their team. It's going to yeah. be Mame now on the Hoopa. Yume, instead of playing the support, is switching over to the Mew. It's a, that level of flexibility that is super cool to see. We've seen it from uh, Oyasumi Macro before. Yeah, Overlord trying to get a bit of an invade. Oh no, sorry, this is actually P getting this invade done, and they steal away the blue buff from this Doduo. It's gonna be real tough for Overlord to hit level five now. They are gonna get that knockout. Elo takes credit for that one, but thanks to that experience share, Dodrio is gonna be here on the map. And Elo with the double buff, a little bit less useful, I think, than some of the other supports that could potentially sure. get it, but, you know, still can be used. Like you said, one of the best support players in the world, without a doubt, a huge true back. That's going to be at least one. They're going to go back to Ninja Doll. Synergy with the hyperspace portal, portal is so, so amazing, uh, but still, that's going to be a good win on the side of LG. As good as that looked when everybody just watched that, it was even better, I promise you. Mm -hmm. That Sacred Sword with that big circle of AoE damage is such a problem for Luminosity to deal with, but Overlord choosing that Drill Peck is huge. It's going to give them just enough mobility to not only do damage, but avoid those huge area of effect damages that that Zashin was just trying to put down. Incredible work from Overlord and Elo in that duo, but here we go. Oyasumi Macro looking to have another robbery. 
Oh, look at this. Three members of Oyasumi Macro trying to take on Overlord, but that's not going to be the easiest thing in the world with the Konfei hanging on. This could turn around very, very quickly. Can't get out of there. The Mean Look's going to be a great option, but only so great backup is arriving. LG just going up even in more KOs. Can they catch the Umbreon as well? The answer is yes. Mame putting down that portal for their Umbreon was essentially a sacrificial play. They had no more mobility options to dodge Overlord. Even Phantom Force wouldn't be fast enough to avoid this to Trio. Overlord getting up close and personal. He lands a huge Solar Blade with the Konfei healing as well as the escape route from Overlord. Looks like it's going to be enough as they chase away. Razor Leaf, though, bringing a ton of damage. And Overlord goes down. Elo drops off and needs to earn some more flowers as now Rin is going to be the major one taking this fight. A Grass Knot locks on the P, but Rin unfortunately does not have the mobility to chase down that KO. Ooh, there was a chance for a lot of KOs here, but that uh, Hoopa reset was gigantic. Now, Rin is probably not going to be going down. They realize that you don't want to try to take that, especially on a Tier 1, this early. So they're going to be rotating down. They're going to be immediately focusing on this basement, Reggie Ice. And only a few members of Luminosity are here to even challenge it. There's a chance to steal, but they're not even focusing on them. Yeah, Surf tries to knock up a couple of people, but Solar Blade is going to lock it down from Oyasumi Macro. They're going to grab the first objective of the game. Curious able to dodge the Unite move from Leafeon, but not the Solar Blade as Shed Ninja Doll runs out and that huge damage enters the field. Overlord, you Night move, triple trample, gets a ton of damage onto the constant option, but it's not enough as P turns the tide of this to match right now, and Elo and Overlord are down. An amazing play. So much damage to the team, but nobody there to follow it up. So maybe not the right time. Whoa, man, just to get around. Catch P. An amazing little dodge right there. Rin with the maneuverability. That was an amazing call, but now I think they're going to have to back up. That was a four-person reset. We're in Japan, so that's a Tokyo drift on that Lapras right, Express. Right. I wasn't going to say it. I said I thought it, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> amazing play there from Rin to get that one KO. It is a small trade, but Leaf one of the highest level members on the opposite team actually means that Rin is going to take that credit now since they have hit that double digit level. 40 points going to go in for Rin and this goal zone is getting extremely close to breaking. They want to break early because of that Hoopa but now the Mew finds a KO the other direction. Zacian getting the chase down but I think they're finally deciding to relent. No! Oyasumi Macro wants to put this siege on now. This can actually be so scary between the Lapras and the Nodrio. You could turn this around pretty quickly. Right now it's just a little bit of a Distraction. That actually allows Rin to heal quite a good amount, but that is a shock! The double hit of the Zacian and the Lithion! A three-player knockup, though, from Rin with that Lapras Express. That is so much damage the other direction. Only two knockouts as the two defenders from Luminosity are going to grab either one of those, but a Solar Beam from the side of Yume is going to take out Kyrios. That is a huge, impactful Pokemon eliminated from that team fight, and Oyasumi Macro holds on to a victory in that small moment. We can see Pi rotating up, going to get 40 in this top tier one. That is huge. That's going to set up a great overdone potential. They also have the ability to try, and I don't know exactly what that Solar Blade was, but they have the ability to try and get that Regilunky if they want to. Only two members down at the base of Regis and spawning from Luminosity. In the meantime, it looks like there are going to be some rotations back up towards top. They might be taking down the Tier 1 on the side of Luminosity as we're watching. Finally, this goal zone break is going to happen. Luminosity Gaming cutting off Mame's value on this Hoopa just a little bit, but Mame going to try to find value elsewhere with a huge top path push. A Unite move is going to bring multiple members of Oyasumi Macro to increase that score lead. That is going to be very, very contentious, but Luminosity is still holding on to it. Curios trying to secure that Registeel, but Leafeon is in position to take it. Solar Blade grabs it. Curios shut down, and the Shed Ninja doll not enough to survive P. Kyrios has really been on the uh, receiving end of that Leafeon's damage a lot this game. And look at this, things are starting to turn back in the favor of Oyasumi Macro. It seemed like they were kind of behind, but they're finding all the picks, Overlord included. They are running as a group, they are not getting picked off. However, Luminosity is holding on to the score lead, and that's going to be very important. We did see a match off broadcast on the B stage where Oyasumi Macro, when Mame was on the Hoopa, decided to completely forego Rayquaza and just unite everybody towards their home base, counter score. We call that one a Yamada, and it looked like one of the best ones we'd seen so far. And in this game, what I have been watching is this player right here, level up on this Umbreon, has had Overlord's number in this mid game. Mean look after mean look, and Overlord has been caught out and just put in too much danger. Elo's healing on this Confei is fantastic, but when four members are turning towards a small circle, Overlord has got nowhere to run. Yeah, I mean, that's just a classic counter. Whoa, going in a circle saying, I don't know if I want 
to do that, actually. <laughs> Maybe let's go the other direction, make a U-turn. Just kidding! Picking up my friend before we come and hang out. And that's going to be a pretty uh, angry friend, I think, bringing along Overlord on the meantime on the bottom side. Not too much going on, a little bit of an engage, just trying to challenge each other for a lot of that neutral experience. Rin as well, just getting healed back up by the Comfy slowly, and of course just by the self-sustain of the Lapras. I actually really like that uh, offensive use of the Lapras Express from Rin, because we're at that 330 minute mark, you're going to want to use that Unite move no matter what, because you can earn it back, but just even trolling around in your own area, you're being a really tough opponent to push into. So a great defensive positioning around that spot really opens up the battlefield, and we assume Macro cannot push into that defender while they are uniting, else they're going to be terribly stunned. All right, here's the decision. Will there be an attempt for the 15 second long take on the base Ooh. of Reggie as it spawns, or are we just going to preemptively position? Definitely know the answer here for Oyasumi Macro. They're behind, they need points, but as far as experience goes, they are ahead, they are leading, they have been winning most of these fights. It doesn't look like anybody's going for any objective, but the most important one in the game. It's really interesting, too, because I don't think at, up until that point, either team had much intel about where the vision was, either direction. Amnesia going to shrug off that boosted auto attack from Yume on to Slash. They're going to be doing all right, again, defending that goal zone. Both Elo and Rin are hanging out around this top path. They know that the Leafeon wants to score, and Leafeon is going to move undetected towards that tier number one, as our team fight still has yet to pop off around our final stretch. And just as a note, Umbreon Unite, oh, just barely coming up as I say that. Everything is available. That's going to be the first oh. Dashing going down off the bat. Rin coming in from behind as well. Can we get pick number two? Umbreon Unite coming out. Gonna grab some shields. Not sure if it's enough. A lot of the shields popped on the side of Luminosity. After the fact, Mame popping the Hoopa unbound. But who's there to even come through the portal? P with an amazing eject button solo by combo. And they get the chase down with the Unite move. The Emerald Two Step is gonna knock out the Inteleon. And yes, even with that back cap, they took the lead momentarily. But Luminosity Gaming sent Overlord to score as well. And now they have the lead, 293 to 242. This is gonna come down some of the, some, some last second heroics in terms of score. Oh, oh catching at the NP with an amazing solar blade. We're gonna have defender versus defender. Rin definitely with the advantage here. The idea might just be to defend. It looks like we're gonna see an attempt maybe to take this right with 40 seconds left. Everybody retreating back towards the middle. They have Station Unite move, one of the best secures in the game, but they're gone. Lapras finds the KO. Rayquaza down to a fraction of the HP, and it's going to be Oyasumi Macro taking the last hit, but only two members have the Rayquaza shields. Luminosity Gaming is going to be charging towards these goal zones and trying to score, but Oyasumi Macro is going to start putting up their defense. Oh, Lapras the scores! The Lapras scores! It's gone back! It's gone back! That's a 200-point lead! Do they have anybody in position? No! That looks like that's going to be it! No chance! It goes in! And Luminosity, your current world champions, are moving to the grand final! The title holders are back again! The last hope of the West! North America's dreams coming true as Luminosity Gaming goes again to grand finals with some last second heroics. Unbelievable. Despite losing a Rayquaza, they are going to be going and winning this match 2 to 0 against a team the caliber of Oyasumi Macro. Setting themselves up in the best position you could possibly be in. What an amazing end of that game. I, I always say, you know, the real test of how strong a team is or a player is is not how they play when they're ahead, but how they play when things don't turn out the way that they want to. And the, the immediate speed at which they shifted to score in a difficult situation after they lost that Rayquaza and win the game was a sign of how strong Luminosity is as a team. Oh, yes. Sumi Macro keeping pace that entire time though. Pui with that back score, that back cap actually tying up or getting the lead for a short moment, but then Overlord winning that 1v1 and scoring in the bottom path to shake things up yet again. I mean, it all came down to a final fight and there they are, Luminosity Gaming in a brand new form. We all recognize this team and we all recognize how powerful they have been in the past, but I'm talking about the present. This team is unreal.
Uh, they are playing so well. It looked a little bit shaky as the tournament started, but they have over time just looked better and better. Even in this set, I want to bring up the fact that they switched to two completely different comps. Absolutely. From game one to game two, and that has been something that infamously over the course of this season, Luminosity has had somewhat of a shaky history with. And we've talked about a lot of heroics in that match specifically, but I think, I think the biggest moment was Rin's Lapras in game number two. So many moments. No, I, I genuinely think there was Lapras Unite to Lapras Unite that was impactful with those final moments around Rayquaza where they were able to secure the knockout onto the Zacian. That target priority is so unbelievably big brain. I can't not describe it. Such a good job from Luminosity. And yes, they're a new addition to this roster, but oh my word, have they earned their place up there. We 